The Ukrainian army remained largely tight-lipped on details of its counteroffensive to retake southern Ukraine, but said it had rendered key bridges in the occupied areas unusable. A spokeswoman for the Ukraine's military command south said in a news briefing on Tuesday that Russia had tried to replace the bridges over the river Dnipro in the Kherson region with pontoons. <laughs> Those bridges that are considered the main transport arteries over the Dnipro River are rendered unusable for heavy military equipment. That's why the enemy and the occupational regime are trying to install alternative crossings. However, the geography and the current of the river, especially in this region, allows them to install pontoons only there where the bridges are located. As of now, they can't send reinforcements from the left bank of the river Dnipro. That's why they are creating an illusion of sending in reinforcements by relocating army units from one settlement to another. That's how they draw a picture for themselves of reinforcing their troops. We're saying that the hottest news is yet to come. As of now, active combat is continuing and this combat needs silence. Earlier, Ukraine said its ground forces had gone on the offensive in the south for the first time after a period of striking Russian supply lines, in particular bridges across the strategically important River Dnipro and ammunition dumps. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky urged Russian troops on Monday to flee for their lives after his forces launched an offensive to retake southern Ukraine. But Moscow said that it had halted the attack in its tracks and inflicted heavy losses on Kiev. International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Grossi has arrived in Kiev and is heading to the Zaporizhia region. He is to inspect and assess any damage damage to Europe's largest nuclear plant. Grossi met President Vladimir Zelensky, who called for the complete transfer of the control over the power plant to Ukraine. It is very important for us, the pressing demands of the IAEA, of the United Nations, and the demands that are supported by all the European and the world leaders concerning the immediate demilitarization of the plant, the removal of all Russia's military units with explosive materials, with any weapons, the liberation of our plant and the creation of a demilitarized zone inside and around Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, and the complete transfer of the plant to the control of the Ukrainian state. Only in this way can we eliminate any risks regarding atomic energy. Ukraine accused Russia of deliberately shelling a corridor that the IAEA officials would need to use to reach the plant in an effort to get them to travel via Russian annexed Crimea instead. There was no immediate response from Moscow. The nuclear power plant has been occupied by Russian forces since the first days of the war in Ukraine, but is still managed by Ukrainian staff and connected to Ukraine's power grid. Russia and Ukraine have traded accusations of shelling in the vicinity of the plant, fueling fears of a radiation disaster. IAEA said its inspectors would assess physical damage to the plant, evaluate the conditions in which staff are working, and determine functionality and safety and security systems. It would also perform urgent safeguarding activities, a reference to keeping track of nuclear materials.